All right. Well, then, Spencer, if you would, catch us up to date. When we last met, our heroes had just hijacked a flying airship piloted by Dave. The airship seemed to be damaged, and the gang raced around trying to fix it, and just after they thought they had it all under control, a shake rattled the hole. The gang awoke in the wreckage of their ship, and in the midst of a deep, dark red cave. Approached by seven uh, humans and a halfling, a chorus of people approached our heroes in the, in the deep of this cave. As our heroes met the, the tribesmen, they realized that they had been swallowed by a great beast known only as the Infinifish. There was this weird point in the show where, we, for some reason, I don't know how, it wasn't my idea. We, 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 we brought all the black people in the audience onto the stage. So there were, there were the eight, 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 eight black people. It, but you, you pulled them on stage. What's up? I said the way how is that you said, it, let's bring all the black people on stage. <laughs> right. I don't know how we got so to that. There point. was a there was a Greek chorus of uh, of all of our black audience members up there, and they were kind of our guides through the bowels of the infinite fish. They took you through some meat curtains. Um, <laughs> they they did a dance that opened the way forward, and you got to their village, which is where you are now. Perfect time again. Nine seconds left on the track, and he knows exactly how to end it. It's Bad amazing. Timing. All right. So uh, let's examine our surroundings. You're in this red cavish area. The walls are fleshy and pustules of glowing golden fluid line the walls, casting light over the area. Several scrap hovels have been shored together from various pits of uh, pieces of ship and or crates and or (laughs) other items. There's about 17 or 18 of these dwellings and they seem quite, you know, modest but workable. (laughs) Cozy. Yeah, cozy for inside of an animal. The people are just hanging around now. They're just going back to their business. So are, are, are you going to play all these people, Spencer? I can play all of them, any of them, none of them, <laughs> whatever has to happen. Okay. Um, I uh, quark. Did you, did you want to get the black people in Pittsburgh to come? <laughs> let's, no, bring, I, let's bring I, them out. Pittsburgh no, no, black no, people. <laughs> it was a, that was a, it was a joke. Quick suggestion. I, I, I don't know how I felt about having done it. It was an organic thing that so halfway through it, I was like, "What are we doing? We're dehumanizing black people." It was. It started as a uh, a thing that was supposed to re-humanize uh, and express ironic like white guilt, and then it, and then there was you know when you when you arrange people in a big long line and give them one microphone for seven, that's like it had the opposite effect for me emotionally. I don't. I, I think they had a good time, but. Uh, you know, I can't really access them emotionally, so I don't know. I seek out the elder or leader of this uh, of this group of people. That's the female chieftain that you met I, know, in Arlington. I approach her. You approach her. I say, what's up? I hope you find our village to your liking. It's not much, but it's all we have. You know, we don't get very much stuff down here, but my friend Phil owns this shop down the lane. There's also an inn to your right um, if you need to sleep. We got some stuff. I'm sorry we don't have much, but it's the inside of a friggin' beast. We probably definitely need some sleep at this point, I imagine, right? <laughs> well, you know, yeah. uh, I, I'm bushed, and I, I, I notice uh, some strange tension between Mulray and Sedona and, and, <laughs> and Sharpie Butts a lot. So I, 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 uh, I find the nearest humble dwelling that a gnome barbarian might, might, might find, and I, I, uh, I, I hit the hay. That happens. <laughs> you take your leave gracefully. I find a, uh, a reflective surface on a wall, and I walk over to it, and I and I brush my hair. Mm. You I, find no reflective surface. No, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I I walk over to some sort of wall, and I imagine that there's something there, and I stare at it, and I brush my hair. Okay. Uh, you look uh, beautiful since becoming a woman. Thank you, Sharpie. Look, uh, said some things back in the epiglottis that, uh, <laughs> I regret, I guess. I mean, because you they, guess? Well, you guess you regret them? Or I you re- actually regret them? Well, I regret making you feel bad. Like, I don't, I don't want to do that. I like you. But if I had you. it, if I hadn't felt bad, you, everything you said would have been fine. I take my flaming sword and, and, and attack the tension in the room. <laughs> Critical hit. Uh, 
okay. I let's, await for my sleep, together. Spencer. That happens. And I walk into the hut where uh, Sharpie and Mulrain are, are talking, and, I, and I, I enter the hut, and I go, oh, boy, I, I, had, a, I had a really healthy night's sleep. Uh, holy moly, what, what did you guys do? What did you talk about? Uh... I mean, what's the, what's the upshot? I don't I don't want to go through a big thing. I guess, what's, well, the we head, slept, what's the headlines? We, we we dreamt of a of a of a, of a futuristic world where uh, our voices were louder uh, <laughs> than they should be, and uh, and and a chorus of angels watched us uh, uh, argue about things that only made sense in that world. <clears throat> let's get back to the game and let's just uh, bring this thing into the into the station on a dime. All right, well, a you're Pittsburgh on, steel dime. You're on track to live in the, the the belly of this fish for the rest of your life right now. Right, it's an infinite fish. And my mom, what did my mom say that nursery rhyme about the infinite fish? It'll eat you. <laughs> she was right. <laughs> All right, so clearly these people, uh, they, they couldn't get out of here for a reason. It's, it's, uh, did they lack some sort of knowledge or, or, or tool that we have that... Uh, to, to get out of the Infinifish? Maybe. I, I I approach the wall with the yellow pustules on it and examine those. You examine the pustules. They seem to em- uh, secrete a vicious odor as well as light, casting light into the room. I take my uh, uh, I, I take a throwing knife and stand back 12 paces and throw a throwing knife into one of the pustules and see what happens. Uh-oh. The pustule pops with a sickening burst. <laughs> Sickly fluid pours <laughs> forth. Uh, I, I, while he's doing that, I want I want to ask around see if I can find the person that they acknowledge as being in charge, like their leader. Yeah, you you meet that, up with uh, the person Cork was talking to. That lady. Okay. Oh, the, yeah. the chieftain lady. Uh, okay. Yeah. How can I help you? You know, do you want a house? Oh, yeah, there, there was there was a shop that uh, her friend owns a shop. Her friend Phil, right? Yep. Phil the shopkeep. I run down to Phil's shop. Hey, I'm Phil. I sell stuff. Um, I don't got much, but sometimes uh, cargo vessels get ate, and I sell them things. All right. Do you want any things? I got uh, I got healing potions. I got a. Uh, I got these syringes full of uh, some sort of paralyzing goop. It's uh, good for calming down uh, the monster, and uh, we do, you know we don't get cable down here, so it's fun. It seems to me, Jeff, that what we need to do, and don't ask me where I got this idea. Uh, is we need to make this giant monster that we're inside puke. Um, monster House, 2009. Oh, I, yeah. Wait, I have I have smoke sticks. Should I light a bunch of my smoke sticks? Yeah. Uh, I, I can uh, hit the fish's uvula with an arrow. <laughs> I say I say because the show is getting to the point where we're going long that we buy all the good stuff that we need. I'll, I'll buy those healing potions. Let's go shopping. And let's and, and uh, let's let's embark on the adventure like uh, next time probably right. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, <laughs> I can I can part with some potions, fifty apiece. Uh, the syringes are gonna run you two fifty. Uh, I'll take the potions. You guys get the syringes. You guys got a fair amount of money. All right, I'll take some okay. syringes. All right. Uh, like. Is there is there anything four. else? Just potions. Uh, and do you guys want any? I got a, I got a rope. I got a signed picture of Derek Jeter. <laughs> Holy shit, Derek Jeter? Yeah, he's a great cleric of renown. <laughs> now, I'm a, I'm a Pirates fan. No, I'll, no. I'll take some rope. Some rope. Okay, you get 40 feet of rope. It only costs a meager amount of silver. All right. All right, so so basically, d- D&D, the people came and brought us awesome swords and Ray of Frost thingies, and all we did was talk about relationships and go shopping. <laughs> Spencer, everybody! <Yay. laughs> 